Okay. And so next we're going to talk about um, using Jupiter at nurse. Um, so these slides are adopted from our other group member, Kelly um, Rowland. So thank you to Kelly for providing these slides. And so what exactly is Jupiter? So at NERPS, we have Jupiter referencing um, using, uh, of course, Jupiter notebooks, but we also have it in reference to being a hub okay. in which you can access multiple resources. It's really nifty and cool. You can simply you can do, you know, you can access a Jupyter notebook. We have pre-built and preset notebooks that you can use for um, your, your um, data and simulations and any type of visualization and processing. So you can use the Jupyter notebooks for a number of different things. You can do it, use it for data cleaning and data transformation, uh, numerical simulation, statistical modeling and visualization machine learning, as well as workflows and analytic frameworks as well. And so how do you use Jupyter? You can really easily access Jupyter very simply by going to jupyter.nurse.gov. So once you are logged into Jupyter, you will simply need to choose a notebook server that you want to spawn. And so, you know, you can choose before, earlier when we talked about learning jobs, you had the interactive op option for a login node. Um, you have a shared CPU node, and this is going to give you a notebook on one of our 40 login nodes that's shared. Um, so with this, you're gonna have the same Python environment as the SSH login, and you can submit jobs um, there. You can have an exclusive CPU and GPU node, and so with this, you, you'll have your notebook and your job allocation on a CPU or GPU node that's exclusive for you to use. And then you can have other configurable job submissions that are going to use um, nurse hours. And these can be used in reservations for you if you have a specific uh, CPU or GPU allocation. So you want to con consider that um, if you're on a shared um, login, then it's going to be, you're going to be on sharing a node with other users users, so you will not have exclusive access to all the processors. And so there are different configurable job settings that you can use, like what we talked about on the job configuration script as well. So the server options that you can select, you can have the, the accounts, the specific constraint of the system that you want to use. Um, the QoS, in this case, is Jupyter, and you can specify those specifics that you need for that specific um, job that you want. So if you're going to need um, just one node, you can put that up to a max of four, and then you can specify other components as well. All right, so once you log into Jupyter Lab, this is what will be an interface if you have a specific um, if you have a specific uh, notebook that you're working with. So in this notebook, it's, it's very similar similar to how if you've used uh, Jupyter notebooks before on your laptops, it's the same thing except for this is actually running on Perlmuter. So you can enter you know uh, your SRON commands within your notebook if you're doing some type of parallel Python or whatnot computation. So it makes it really simple and easy for you to, to, do, um, to do your science and do your work online. So the interface with it is that you will have a, we have added a few add-ons to, to our Jupyter Hub. We have a few favorites here. Um, and in this case, you can have your, your different storage areas that you can have access to, to access, um, as well as your current directory and all of those files that you can have listed. This is going to have a number of different, representing a number of different notebooks, but if you had other um, C or other Python scripts, that would show right here for you to simply double click on it below. And so you can launch, uh, do a new um, launcher as well, if you want to open, um, if you need to open another window, or if you need to open a specific path or URL, um, you can, Go to recent places that you files that you visited on the file system as well. All right, 
and so in Jupiter, we use what are basically called kernels. And the kernel is what the, the what actually is going to run your code. So when you launch a kernel on Jupyter, you'll, you'll, you can select the default Nurse Python kernel. And that is going to be selected from the Python module. So you simply will be logging into Jupyter Hub here. And then you'll connect to the Jupyter server. And then you'll connect, select your notebook. And then the kernel will be selected as well. Um, and there Is it possible to replace this browser with an IDE or is it suggested? I'm, I'm sorry? Like, oh yeah, you can use um, Visual Studio. Um, yeah, any so it's I, possible to connect like? Yeah, and we have online, we, we last month did a training on collecting, con connecting VS code and we have yeah. other IDEs that you can connect to Perlmutter as well. So. I'll put that in our Q&A doc and direct link for that. Okay. Good question. And so you can also create your own Jupyter kernel as well. Um, and so different ways that you can accomplish that is, of course, through Conda. And you can just do a Conda install, and you can create your specific kernel that you want to use. And then you want to determine what you want that specific name to be. So you point your, once you created that, you would need to just restart your notebook in order for that kernel to show up for you to select. And so this, your own kernel would go into a kernel spec file, and this is what it would look like if you wanted to create your own custom kernel. And all of the more details and more specifics on this is available on our documentation. But if you get confused, again, you can do what? Send a help ticket. Yeah, submit a help test ticket. Um, some additional customization options. Kernel helper script that can be used if you need to uh, provide some additional um, parameters for specific modules and environment variables that you need to use. And then if you are going to need to specify the kernel within a shifter image, you can have the specifics such as the image name as well as the path to uh, Python and the image that you need to use as well. And so you're also able to debug issues that you have within um, Jupyter Notebook. Uh, if you do have problems with a notebook and you're unable to resolve it, it would be very helpful if you would submit uh, your, your your log to and any errors that you receive if you do submit a help ticket. Okay, and so this kind of chart details uh, Jupyter usage at Nurse since January of 2018. So we started at um, about under 200 users, and now we have well over 16 or well over 1,500 users per month that make use of Jupyter at Nurse. So, and so for comparison, we have about 3,000 users that connect per month um, via SSH. So Jupyter has definitely exponentially increased in usage at Nurse, and we anticipate that that will continue. All right, and so Jupyter at Nurse summary, um, you are able to use Jupyter at Nurse. Um, and so in order to use it, you just log in, click on this link and log in using your nurse credentials. And you will want to use your Conda spec environment to customize it as well. Um, if you're looking, we're always looking for new ways to help users I get the most out of Jupiter. If you have any ideas or recommendations or tips, um, please be sure to give us your feedback and advice by submitting a help desk ticket. Um, 
we are at the end, but what I did want to make sure is I want everyone to um, type in your web uh, web page, go to jupiter.nurse.gov, and I want everyone to make sure that you are able to log in and access uh, Jupiter Hub online. And once you've logged into Jupiter Hub, if you could just give me a thumbs up or enemy uh, on the Zoom. <laughs> or in the room. Looks like everyone is doing good and getting logged in because this will be good because at the for our follow-up on our survey, you'll have access to our interactive notebook that will show you how to um, run three different types of job using the Jupyter in Jupyter using the using the Jupyter notebook um, and running Python applications that use OpenMP. Uh, MPI and MPI and Puda. So we are at the end of our training um, for day two. Um, at this time, we would uh, we'd love to have any um, questions or feedback or thoughts about the training. I'm going to post the survey link again on Zoom chat. And it's also on the top of the Google Doc. Yes, if you could also take a moment to go ahead and um, complete the survey. And I am seeing a few questions in the chat, and I'm going to enter those into the Q&A doc. Also, if you have any questions that come to your mind over the next couple of days, the Q&A doc will be available for you to still add to it until Monday, um, 5 p.m. Pacific. And all materials, videos, uh, presentations, slides are, will be posted on the event page, as well as YouTube videos on the Nurse YouTube within, within by the end of one week from the end of the training. And I know time is up, but we do have the reservation, and you can point them to the GitHub repo for the hands on exercises. People can do hands on okay. using the reservation at Q 1145. Otherwise, without reservation, it's also easy to just submit to the regular queue. That's all about exercise. Yeah. The link is good. Link. You want to point them to the exercises? I think it's on the Google yeah. doc. Yeah, let me put that. And I'll okay. add the, the information on how okay. to use them. Okay. So access the reservation today. Thank you all for attending.